standalone device and software platform built from the ground up for AI. It comes in All right. three colorways. All right, so this is cool. Perpetual power system. Always power always system. Always what the hell is that? It's just it's a battery. How much is this online? This is $28 online. Great. Buy it. I have so many questions. Like, he just bought a book. From where? What? Don't tell me there's a subscription. Don't tell me there's a subscription. All for just $24 a month. No. 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 All right. We have to talk about this. There's so much to unpack here. So let's just start with the product. W what is this? So this is an AI pin. It's something that you wear on your shirt. And basically, you tap on it and you can talk to an AI assistant. So before getting into the heated argument, let's talk about the things that I actually like. And you can see that they've put a lot of thought into creating a system. Like they have the device, the clip attachment, they have attachment for software garments. And what I really like is actually the battery. So basically the battery sits outside the device. It's two pieces. There's the AI pin and there's the battery. And basically the two sit in between the, the piece of clothing. So if I have my shirt here, the battery will go inside, the clip will go outside, and then for induction, basically the larger battery then charges the battery inside the device. So it is a pretty cool thing. She has a leather jacket. I wonder if that works with a leather jacket and you can actually get electrical current to pass. Pure aesthetically speaking, it's not bad. Why the chrome finish? Why the stupid chrome finish? Chrome finishes are for like 2002 Chinese knockoff MP3 players. The matte black one is not bad. I have to say, but the charging case is just horrendous. Like it's a mix of transparent top lid with chrome, everything. But now we have to talk about the big thing. Let me tell you what I think happened here. So this company, Humane, is a few years old. They have two seasoned executives from Apple. One of them is in the team that built the iPhone, huge credibility, 240 millions in investment. They did partnership with Google, with Tidal, with Slack. It's clear that these guys know what they're doing. They're very well connected. So they had this device. They had this idea for this AI pin that you wear on your shirt. They were probably tinkering around with computer vision, which is something that two, three years ago, Google was very focused on, like Google Lens. And then one year ago, ChatGPT comes out and they realize, oh my God, this is a new huge thing. We have the perfect device for this. Let's just drop everything and integrate ChatGPT into this AI pin that we're building. And this is going to be perfect. So why is this a stupid idea? First of all, you're now relying like your core technology, the core thing that makes your product great it's not yours, it's Sam Altman's. They're saying Microsoft and OpenAI's API. So this means that anytime you're doing anything on a device, it goes up to the cloud, processed, and then the reply comes back. Nothing wrong with that, but what happens when they get something wrong? And they actually did get something wrong in the demo. The date of the eclipse here that they, they mentioned, it, it's just wrong, ChatGPT hallucinated. And so this means that you have this idea of the perfect device where everything is integrated and it's part of your life and you have to trust it. But whenever there's something that doesn't work, you can really not fix it because it's not your own model. It's open AIs. And then there's the idea behind it. There's a song by Dave Matthews Band that goes, I love the idea of you. And this is exactly what this is for me. I love the idea behind it. The idea that you have a thing that you constantly wearing, that's constantly aware of your surroundings, of what goes on with the camera, always listening to what's around you. So for example, at the end of the day, you can say, oh my God, what did my friends say 10 hours ago about where we're gonna meet later? Let's ask the AI, which recorded, uh, let's get a summary of the day. And yeah, it's gonna be a privacy nightmare, but let's forget about it for a second. This is AI and the power of AI that we are really seeing in conjunction with context of what is going on around you in your life every day, working in synergy, in a perfect dance that's gonna make your life so much easier. And the AI pin seems perfect for that. It's on your shirt, it's here, it has camera, it has microphones, but they don't own the AI model. They are not really taking advantage of the camera because it draws a lot of battery. They cannot really record or keep recording anything that goes on around you. You can use only small snippets of text while you're doing this because they cannot just keep sending stuff to open AI. It's gonna be insanely expensive and draining a battery in like two minutes. And then we have to talk about the output. So how do you get the information here? You either get audio back with these personic speakers, which I would be curious to try, but then we have the 
projector thingy. And the projector thingy, to me, is the stupidest part of this. Because the point of a user interface, the point is to make things easier than the interface that come before it. When we had smartphones and touchscreens, they were better and easier to use and tapping on the screen than navigating around with buttons on a keyboard. And this has been true always in order to be a success. So imagine, what is easier? Double tapping on your ear to go next song, or maybe even clicking a button or double tapping on the whatever AI pin, or taking out your hand, waiting for a projector to project something on your hand, then twisting your hand slightly until you select the next button and then doing this, which is the same gesture that a new Apple Watch does. Why are you creating this weird and clunky projection UI, which is cool, by the way, for what? To show me the time? It's not really using a visual interface for any Thing really visual. So this begs the question, why is this even an AI pin? Why is this not glasses? I mean, the meta glasses that meta just launched do the exact same thing. So take away the whole projector thing. They do exactly the same thing, arguably even better. And another thing that this demo does is just creating a lot more questions that it answers. So let's go to this part right here. How much is this online? This is $28 online. Took a photo of this book and then sent it out to the LLM. The LLM recognizes the book, brings back the information. It's basically Google Lens. And then he says, okay, the LLM says this is $28 online. Great, buy it. And then the demo ends and it cuts to another thing. This is an exact example of why Alexa failed. Alexa and the dream of personal assistant and why we are just using them for controlling the lights or setting a timer, it's because they are not the right interface for delivering complex information. You can make a purchase with Alexa today. You can ask your Amazon and you'll soon realize why people are not doing that because it's just not an experience that is built for this. There's no trust. What card am I using to make this purchase? $28, where is this from? Who, who got this price? Like, is it Amazon? Is it the best price on the internet? No idea. They are relying on trust and trusting the AI is gonna make the best decision for you. But we all know that AIs right now are just not reliable. They hallucinate all the time. There's so many questions here that are not answered. And these are the important questions because the idea of this is great. Another point in their narrative is that this is gonna be replacing the smartphone. They clearly frame this as a smartphone replacement. It's not an add-on, it's not an accessory. The easiest thing would have been to say, hey, this is almost like an Apple Watch, you wear it, on your shirt, you wear it here and it connects to your phone and it's actually better because then your phone can actually connect to OpenAI server and do all the processing and it saves battery, but they didn't. They said, this is a standalone device. This is its own thing. You don't need a phone because this works like magic. You pay 700 for the device, 699, and then $24 a month. And they use something called an MVNO, a mobile virtual network operator. But basically, instead of your own carrier, this will be under the humane network. So they build this kind of integrated thing where you pay monthly and you get access to the internet. This is a smartphone replacement, fantastic. How do I send a picture to my friend? How do I view a picture I've just taken? I don't have a problem with the pin trying to be an AI assistant for you. I have a problem with the pin trying to say, hey, you don't need a phone anymore because AI can do anything now and you don't need to worry about anything. You should completely trust AI. It's gonna be your own personal assistant. But the goal of products is to transform the idea of it into meaningful execution. This is the hard part. This is the actual design, the actual engineering that goes behind things and working with the technical limitations that you have. And it just leaves so many questions unanswered about how is this gonna practically work in your daily life? I would really love to see Humane succeed. They have everything they need. They have good talent, good funding, well-connected. I just think that this is not it. And actually, in this rather video right here, I go through what is my personal vision of what is gonna be the future of the smartphone and the future of AI hardware. So go watch that, and I'll see you in the next one.